Welcome to Chris and Carlette Live, a podcast about life, love, and overcoming obstacles. Each week, we discuss the good, the bad, and the indifferent of life's interruptions. Now, here's your host, Chris and Carlette. Keep believing, don't go stressing, keep it moving, God, we're resting, here to help you, here to bless you, mm-hmm. I am trying to, we have literally one month till school is over mm-hmm. and I can um, stop for, um, stop being a second grade virtual homeschool mm-hmm. teacher, mommy. I mean, I'm still be mommy, but you know, the whole second grade thing will be over. People can call me and it, they won't hear that chatter and those voices anymore of the teacher and the students as well as my son. So, or our son, so, um, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I am free. I'll be singing that song. So, um, you know, yeah. Wow. Well, uh, you want to discuss about, uh, last week where we recap? So last week we, um, we had Mr. Richard Graves. He's a certified diabetes specialist and we had, jasmine denny on what we talked about last week was type 1 diabetes um also known as juvenile diabetes which is a very common um believe it or not diabetes that is uh, diagnosed in children and so although um jasmine is an adult now in a phd program jasmine was diagnosed at age 11 and she gave us her story and uh i know a lot of people say well why don't you talk about uh Type two. Well, type two is mentioned a lot and type one is not. So, you know, here on um, Chris and Carlet Live, Life Interruptions, Good, Bad and Indifferent, we are going to discuss um, what is not being discussed or something to bring to the forefront even the more. Um, And because that's real. I mean, at 11, 12 years old, you know, what would what were you know, ask yourself, what was I thinking about? What was I doing at that age that I um, was interrupted with type one diabetes? So I'm saying all this to say a a lot of information was given. Um, We were educated very well. Um, We encouraged people to contact Mr. Richard Graves and, um, and his company for all your diabetic needs, whether it's type one, type two shoes, um, and so forth, you know, needles and even with the CGM system, which is the continuing uh, continuing glu- glucose monitoring system, as well as ambulatory inv- infusion pumps. And I'm going to tell you, um, I'm a prioritization nurse for an um, uh, a HMO. And let's just say I approve a lot of these and it's a lot of them for children. Um and, and then, you know, a lot of myths were dispelled, such as, well, if a child has type 1 diabetes, they're overweight. Nope, not at all. I watched Jasmine grow up, and she was not overweight. They call they come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. And, um, yeah, and our, our children are suffering. So, you know, something to educate ourselves, have the conversation, and, and to educate yourself, look for any symptoms. We talked about the symptoms. We talked about the warning signs. You know, Jasmine talked about how she, um, it was Thanksgiving, either Thanksgiving Day or Thanksgiving Eve, and she was thirsty, 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 and constantly using the bathroom. And so her aunt uh, was with her mom. They was at the grocery store, and she said, I think you need to get her checked, tested for diabetes. She's having the symptoms. And sure enough, the next day, Took her to um, the hospital, I believe it was, and she had a blood sugar over 300 at age 11. So, you know, hey, let's not be in doubt. Let's be informed. Let's be proactive. 
And, you know, if we're seeing these signs in our children, we need to um, do what's necessary to help our children, you know, get them diagnosed, get them treated and um, and be proactive and not reactive. So um, that's what we talked about last week. Uh, Mr. Graves, again, he gave us a lot of information. I even liked the, de- you know, he showed us what a pancreas looked like. You know, it was really good. Very, very good. Um, it was almost like show and tell a little part where Jasmine actually showed us her. Um, she actually showed us her, uh, her CGM and her um, infusion pump. So, you know, we saw it, you know. Uh, we got our COVID shot. You want to discuss about that? Well. Not that I want to make that public, but I guess so, huh? <laughs> we got part one. Uh, yes, we did. We did the Pfizer. We did our part. Um, we did our research. Um, I will say this. I am not knocking no, no one in particular, but we were signed up for one particular. And then once we started hearing all the reports, we canceled that, uh, canceled, um, that appointment. And um and to our benefit, our church, the Life Church of Atlanta, where our pastor is, Dr. Terrence A. Merritt, who is also a physician. Our church is uh, was a site this past Wednesday for the Pfizer injection vaccination. And so we um, we went we made our appointment. And, um, yeah, we went and got part one. And in three weeks, we get part two. So, you know, we did our part. Everybody has their own, you know, beliefs, thoughts, um, their own feelings about what they're going to do. Hey. You, you, your own healthcare um, advocate. How about that? So, as for the Edwards, we got it, part one. And so, um, as far as a reaction, only thing I, I um, dealt with was um, soreness in the arm that literally lasted 24, 48 hours. Um, the Mister here, he had the sore arm, and he, but when he came in, he he took a nice little nap, and once he got up, he was very refreshed, and um, he did experience the headache. This was yes. another comment. He experienced a headache, but of course. But it was like when when the headache went away, it mm-hmm. just was like, bam, it's gone. Like, bam, it's gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just was like, oh my God, where did it go? Yeah, it was gone. Like overnight. It was like a, a miracle. And I'm going to tell you all this too. Before we, we got the um, vaccination, we got tested to make sure it was not there. You know, go in and form that you're already negative. Um, because they're going to ask you on the questionnaire, are you, ha- you know, you have all these signs, all these symptoms, you know, you shouldn't be kidding. Mm-hmm. You know, so go in informed. It's OK to take a test. It's real easy. Um, guess what? We got swabbed at a, at a church. <laughs> right. <laughs> we got right. tested at a church. Listen, our churches are being proactive and we're grateful for that in our communities. So, um, yeah, shout out to my church, the Life Church of Atlanta. Well, uh, that's a great segue. We have an awesome man. We have just so so many great guests. Yes, we do. I'm like, oh my god! I'm trying to. And and you know what? It's a blessing. It yes. we have come in contact with a lot of people over our lives, um, in our marriage before we knew each other, and and we now we have a platform. We didn't even know we would ever do something like this, but to bring them on because they have something to say. They have experiences. You know, this is Chris and Carlette Live. However, our sub um, our subtitle is Life's Interruptions, Good, Bad, and Indifferent. And trust me, everybody is dealing with a life interruption. So um, after saying all that. Well, this one particular person that we have today, I don't know if she remembers. I know she knows my family, and that's all I'm going to say. But I don't know if she remembers this, though. Okay. That I was so scared. Uh oh. That I was so scared. Uh huh. I had to be in front of the judge. Uh oh. Here comes judge. She may not remember this, but uh, attorney Terry C. Gray was uh, my attorney at the time. <laughs> okay. And just say I had a few traffic tickets. So. <laughs> Oh, oh my. Why don't you go ahead and read her bio? I will do that. The Honorable Karen Freeman Wilson um, began serving as president and CEO of the Chicago Urban League in January 2020. She brings a passion of equity and social justice to organization, which works to advance economic, educational, and social progress for African Americans through direct service and advocacy. Having served in the public arena most of her professional life, 
Um, let me ask you this. Are you Dr. Freeman Wilson? No. Okay. Um, can I call you Judge Freeman Wilson? I got to put, la- put a I got to put a title there. I got to put a handle there. Mrs. Freeman Wilson. <laughs> President Freeman Wilson has deep experience in addressing issues that impact urban communities. She was mayor of her hometown, our hometown, Gary, Indiana, from 2012 through 2019. She was the first female to lead the city of Gary and the first African-American female mayor in Indiana. Her her mayoral accomplishments include job creation, completion of a $100 million dollar airport runway relocation and the development of key areas in the city. She previously served as Indiana attorney general director of the Indiana civil rights commission and presiding judge of the Gary city court. She also served as executive director of the national drug court Institute and CEO of the national association of drug court professionals, (coughs) where she is currently board vice chair. President Freeman Wilson is graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Law School. That means she, she's smart. Very smart. Learned. Learned. She is a past president of the National League of Cities, past chairperson of the Criminal and Social Justice Committee of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and sits on the National Police Foundation Board of Directors. She is a member of Israel CME Church. Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, the mm-hmm. Lynx Incorporated, the NAACP, the Urban League of Northwest Indiana, and the Indiana Bar. President Freeman Wilson and her husband, Carmen Wilson II, have a blended family of four children. Please, please, everyone, welcome President, the Honorable Karen Freeman Wilson. Ooh, let me get the sound effects. Let me- Thank you so much. Wrong one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, there we go. You guys are too much. Too much. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to see both of you. You it's great to likewise. be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. So I don't know if you remember that, but I know you you saw a lot of people during your judge day. So <laughs> Yeah, we were one of the busiest traffic courts in the state. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. I could imagine. I wow. could imagine. Wow. Yeah. Well I know she remembers my family. Who is your family? The Blakely family of Gary. Oh Indiana. absolutely. Yes, my grandfather, the late Bishop William O. Blakely, and all my uncles, aunts, cousins, my mother, she was number fourteen out of sixteen, McKinley Street. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, my sister Joy is on. And then Willette and I yeah. went to um, junior high school together. Yes, yeah, she told us to tell you hello. Yes, yeah, she yes, yes, told please. us. She yes. made sure that we were to tell you hello. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. So uh, we want to appreciate and thank you for joining us today on Chris and Carlette Live. This is our podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. We're uh, we're living down in the Atlanta area now, uh, Miss Freeman. So um, I'll actually be down in Atlanta for Morehouse graduation weekend, oh, even wow. though it's not going to be in person. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Our mm-hmm. our pastor is Morehouse alumni. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Is that right? Yes, he is. That's wonderful. Stop looking at That's the TV. That's awesome. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to stop looking at the TV. I got to stop looking at the TV. Yes, yes. So, yeah, well, thank you again. Um, Just wanted to to have a little fireside chat with you. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in our country and throughout the world. But I wanted to first start with you. Um, when, When I think of Karen Freeman Wilson, I think of, I go back to the judge days. Um, and now that I see you, you know, progressing even further and higher, it's like, how, what is it like to be one, an African American female? And two, what is it to, what is it like to go from a Harvard grad to a judge to a mayor? Well, to attorney general and then to a mayor and to doing what you're doing now. So uh, first and foremost, let me thank you guys for having me on here. Thanks for reaching out. I mean, there are plenty of folks in Atlanta who could be on your podcast and I'm sure you've had uh, some great guests, but um, you know, the first thing I always think about is being able to serve. 
Mm -hmm. uh, being blessed to serve, saved to serve, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the opportunity that each of those offices, uh, positions, titles has afforded me to uh, serve and to really think about how with a team of people, I've been able to make um, somewhere better than I found it, whether it's the city court where we started one of the longest standing drug treatment courts in the state of Indiana, whether it is the um, mayor's office where we have added uh, millions of dollars in infrastructure, new businesses, um, you know, we have created jobs, we have uh, come into compliance in places where we weren't, you know, you think about the fact that the Gary Housing Authority was out of compliance for over 10 years, mm -hmm. um, actually mm -hmm. closer to 20 years. And we are now out of the troubled status as of March of this year. We laid that groundwork. We created that opportunity, worked in partnership with HUD. Uh, you think about the Gary uh, Sanitary District, which had a special administrator for over 20 years from the time that Mayor Barnes wow. was in office. Mm -hmm. And they no longer have a special administrator. So, you know, to be able to uh, work with and work for your neighbors, your relatives, your friends, um, church members, and to be able to uh, make a difference is very humbling. And to now be able to continue to do that in another state wow. and not worry about the potholes or the garbage. <laughs> right. I, I hit the lottery. Right. <laughs> I, I hit the professional lottery. Wow. Wow. So so what was it like, though, being the first attorney general in the state of Indiana that was black, that is black and a female? Well, you know, I, and I posted this, I think, in either February or March, because my mentor was actually the first black attorney general. Mm -hmm. But because, you know, Gary just showed out in record numbers when I was sworn in, mm -hmm. a lot of people thought I was the first, but the first oh, was wow. actually Pamela Carter. Okay. And so to be able to follow in her footsteps, to have her as a mentor, uh, to have her as someone who said to me, and, and I never will forget this because I went to interview with her when I um, thought about going down as the Indiana Civil Rights Commission director. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, my mom had just uh, come out of the hospital after having been in a coma for 30 days. Oh, wow. And so when she asked me to come down and talk to her and, and to talk to the governor. And Evan Bai was the governor at that time about coming and joining their team. I said, no, no, I can't do that because, um, you know, my mom, I'm an only child. My father had passed away in 1987. And so this was 88. And, and you know, I just said, no, I can't do that. And they said, well, um, Indianapolis is really not that far. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that you need to take care of things for your family, we will be flexible, but we really want you to join the team. And, mm -hmm. you know, for her to have that type of compassion for someone that she had just met mm -hmm. uh, was just something that was uh, great for me mm -hmm. and great for me to see and to incorporate as I learned to manage people, because that was very early on in my career. And I never will forget, we had another one of those types of conversations when uh, Governor O'Bannon asked me to accept an appointment as attorney general. Mm -hmm. And I was on the bench then, mm -hmm. having a great time, wow. traveling all over, training mm -hmm. in drug court, doing curricula, you know, attending drug court conferences. I probably could have done that another 20 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, well, I don't know, Pam, what do you think? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You know, do you think I should accept that? She's like, well, you know, if you want to be a municipal judge the rest of your life, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, that that would be something that would be great to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I just think this is an opportunity for you to do other things. And she was right. Uh, even though I served, lost an election. In fact, I've lost more elections than I've won. Uh, but, um, you know, to have that type of exposure and to be able to understand state government, it was something that ultimately worked to the benefit of my service as mayor and um, my service on boards and commissions as an attorney to uh, be able to understand how the Indiana General Assembly works Mm -hmm. and to meet uh, leaders in the Indiana General Assembly who I could ultimately go to and say, Gary needs this, Gary needs that, Uh, this is what we'd like to do. Um, And, you know, that all came from me uh, being the attorney general. Mm -hmm. So then you moved on to to be the, you know, when I think about Gary, it like, I don't know, even though I moved away and my wife and I, we've been gone for some years now. It's like, I don't know if there's any other city and I correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if there's any other city that you're proud to be of despite the economic economic downfall, despite what's going on in Gary. And we were labeled at one point, the murder capital of the world. Gary still has a residence in my heart. And, and not only it that, engenders such yes. a great feeling. I mean, we were shouted out on the Oscars last night. Yes, we were. By really? me and Neil. Yes, we were. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Who was who is from Gary? Oh, wow. Made history last night wow. as the first uh, group in, that had African-Americans who had black folks mm-hmm. make up hair for Ma Rainey's black bottom. Right. And they won the Oscar. <laughs> and she talked about Gary. Yes, wow, she she's from she. Wow, mm-hmm. that she is. She said, "I'm from Gary Dina Holland Neal's daughter." Wow, um, you know Jim Holland's granddaughter, mm-hmm. deputy mayor, longtime deputy mayor with uh, Mayor Hatcher. Right. I mean, you know, I I told her mom. I you know I sent her a text and I was like, I know how proud you had mm-hmm. to be because I was sitting there. That's the only reason I watched the Oscars uh-huh. yesterday uh-huh. because she was nominated. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And then not not to say good old Michael Jackson down the street, 2300 Jackson. So. <laughs> 2300 Jackson Street. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes. Wow, that's amazing. But yeah, and 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 when we were living we lived out in California and one day um I went to Walmart and I was walking out. I'm like, "Man, that that guy looks familiar." And it turned out to be uh Ray, was Jermaine. it Jermaine Jackson? And I said, hey, Incredible. hey, Jermaine, I'm from your city. And he came over and gave me some love and stuff. It was just like amazing. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm proud to say that, you know, I'm from Gary, Indiana. And, you know, so, yeah. So how was that being mayor? You know, it was uh, one of the hardest jobs that I have ever done professionally. Mm-hmm. But by the same token, one of the most rewarding mm-hmm. Um, And it was hard because you're right. Um, Gary has had challenges for over 30 years Mm -hmm. um, because of the disinvestment with steel, Mm -hmm. uh, because of the downsizing, because of white flight, because of all of the things that come when you have a disorderly departure. Mm -hmm. The jobs left and then the people left. You have a steel industry, an entire industry that went from employing 25 to 30,000 people to employing 4,000 people, four to five. Wow. And I mean, it's still the flagship, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it is simply not necessary to have as as many people working. And so to have all of that happen, And, you know, people lost their jobs one week and decided I'm moving to Dallas. I'm moving to Houston. I'm moving to Minnesota. I'm moving to Wisconsin. I'm moving to Texas, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And they just left their houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can go to any abandoned house in the city of Gary and you will find furniture. Mm -hmm. You will find clothing. You will find belongings 
because people just left. And to then be responsible for contending with that, for trying to fix that. Because in that same block, Mm -hmm. you'll have four elderly people who keep their property in a pristine condition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they're wondering, why do I have to live among this? Mm -hmm. But, you know, typically when people have houses, they will will them to someone. Mm -hmm. They will ensure that it's sold or Mm -hmm. ensure that something else happens. But people just left. Wow. And um, and because of that, it made it that much harder Mm -hmm. to sort of bring the city back. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you do it in a variety of ways, but people want to see things happen and and they expect to see things happen along the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that was the the greatest challenge. And then um, finding the resources, Mm -hmm. because even though you have tax dollars, you certainly don't have the tax dollars that you once had when you had a city of 200,000 people, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that you have 75, 77,000 people, you still have to serve that same 53 square miles with fewer people and fewer dollars. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it makes for a challenge. But here's the thing. If you develop a plan, you will find people from the most unlikely places who will show up to help. Mm -hmm. Mike Bloomberg. Mm. Uh, you know, the Knight Foundation. Yeah, Mike Bloomberg came to Gary. Uh, We won Mm. a public art challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after winning that public art challenge, he wanted to come and see the art installation and to talk about what we had done and um, showed up in the city of Gary. Wow. Wow. And I know you were instrumental in getting uh, uh, Amazon, right? Am I correct in that? Well, we did. So uh, people thought I was crazy Mm -hmm. because when they had the um, RFP out for HQ2, Mm -hmm. uh, I said, we're going to put together a bid. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a a grandiose plan. We were going to have the, we were going to name the airport Prime Airport because we were like, we've got an airport. (laughs) We've got everything that you need. And because of that, that brought Gary to their attention Mm -hmm. and, you know, took out an ad in the Times and did a letter to Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. And, you know, folks like were like, you know, that's crazy. And one of the local papers said, you know, that was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But right now, people are going to work every day in Gary Mm -hmm. and Amazon. And it's certainly not HQ2. But it is one of the ways that we were able to add jobs. And as a result of that, UPS Mm -hmm. is now flying in and out of the Gary Airport. Really? That's amazing. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Man, we just have so many untapped resources, though. People just don't know. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, and I say we because, you know, I'm from Gary. It's still home, right? It's still home. home. It's still home. (laughs) Wow. Well, I think, I think. Maybe a couple years ago, um, mm-hmm. you 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 put Gary on the map again. Oh yeah, you put Gary on the map. Oh goodness gracious! <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Undercover boss. <yeah. laughs> and you know they keep running that there thing. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, you're a police officer. You helped out in the uh, San, clean up. The, the was the sanitation. Sanita- yeah, the sanitation. Sanitation. Yeah, fire, and that fire. wig. <laughs> that wig. So there you go. So there's the sanitation. Yeah, I had to do a few little screenshots. <laughs> that was a hot mess. Uh, yeah, that but was- you know what? What I will tell you, and, and I was talking to someone about this the other day. Um, I worked with, actually, there were four people that were on the show. Mm -hmm. I worked with, because there was Steve, there was Brandon, there was um, 
the police officer and okay. So there were three on the show. I worked with five mm -hmm. and each of those individuals to a person. No, I worked with uh, six because there was a firefighter, mm -hmm. Nate. Mm -hmm. And um, and each of those individuals to a person was dedicated, was uh, passionate about the work they did. I, the um, other, I, you saw Brandon, but Valerie, the other sanitation worker or Gary Sanitary District worker that you did not see, mm -hmm. when we were cleaning the sewer, we were actually cleaning the sewer mm -hmm. and someone stopped us and she said, um, she said, you know, I'm glad they got me because I like to give people accurate information about how they can give city services even if it's not my department. Mm -hmm. And you know, most folks would just be um just probably annoyed because I'm cleaning a sewer. Doesn't someone see me cleaning this sewer? Because mm -hmm. I cer certainly felt that way as we were <laughs> moving manholes and things like that. But she stopped and she wanted to help. Wow. And that was how every person I worked with for the city. Now, you know, they had some really funny things to say about me and, and you know, the equipment and, and things like that. And I will tell you, working in the sun mm -hmm. at 80 degrees on the beach mm -hmm. and then having folks just drop Hennessy bottles all over wow. or beer cans or pop cans, you name it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really y'all? <laughs> really? Wow. But, uh, you know, notwithstanding that it was a, a great experience and a great way to be able to highlight the city. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the the notes and letters that I got from people all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, there was one person from, you know, Eastern Europe. I can't remember which country. I would love to move to Gary. Do you mm -hmm. have a program that welcomes foreign uh, visitors. Mm -hmm. And I said, we don't have a program, but you're welcome to move to Gary any day right. that you'd like to move. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, you have to really appreciate mm -hmm. that. Right. Well, I want to shift lanes a little bit and talk about the political climate um, this that we see uh, nowadays and kind of compare that to the past, I guess. But, you know, it's like, when you think about politics of today, it's, it's, it's as if the dignity and the morale has left politics. I mean, it's like, man, it seems like the Democrats can't. Can, uh, people don't want to work yeah, together. Just, uh, are the Republicans people don't, don't want to work yeah. together. They I mean, people together. don't want, I was watching uh, John Boehner and I forget which late night show he was on, but, um, People can't disagree without being disagreeable mm -hmm. and without taking it personally and then making it a personal. If I disagree with you, it doesn't mean that I think that you're less than or that I'm think that I think that I'm better than. It's that I have come to a conclusion that is different from yours. Mm -hmm. Now, we used to have that all the time in politics. Mm -hmm. You know, think Newt Gingrich, right? Mm -hmm. Think folks in that era. Mm -hmm. They could do that and still work with people from a different party. Um, they did that with different presidents. You know, I was able, I, I never will forget, when I was in DC doing drug courts at the national level, mm -hmm. I work with Republicans all the time. We work with Democrats all the time because the drug courts was a bipartisan issue, even though I had been a Democratic office holder. But now there's this almost meanness mm -hmm. uh, and and a, a level of, of underlying seething hatred that is largely based on the differences that we have mm -hmm. and not based on um, anything that we have in common. People almost have a hard time seeing that we have more in common mm -hmm. than, than our differences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we all want our children to have better opportunities than we did. We all want to 
have the best opportunity for jobs mm -hmm. and housing and, and those things that are deemed to be the American dream. And we all want to honor and to really hold our elders mm -hmm. in high esteem. And for some reason, we choose to focus on the differences that folks think about in getting there. I mean, something as simple as mask, mm -hmm. yes. right? Right, right. Yes. exactly. That are contemplated to keep us all healthy. Right. You know, there's a, I don't know if you've seen the meme on social media where uh, people made the comparison with not having mask on and not having pants on. And it's mm -hmm. like, so if you have pants on and somebody pees on the pants, then, you know, <laughs> guess what? You don't get wet. Right. But if you don't have them on, guess what? You're liable <laughs> you to get, get soaked. <laughs> And, and that's all it is with the mask. This right. is helping you. This is helping the other person. This is helping everyone. Mm -hmm. And to think that, you know, you have made this an issue of freedom mm -hmm. as opposed to yeah. public health, yeah. when over 500,000 people, over a half a million people have died, and, and many of them unnecessarily, right. because we just would not act collectively and in the best interest mm -hmm. of the common good. That, that's amazing to yeah. me. Do you think that um, our past president uh, just kind of took the sheets off the issue, uh, off the hatred and the racism? Has it been underlying, uh, I guess? Undercover, underlining, sleep, dormant, quiet, maxed <laughs> up, Band-Aid over it, ripped it off. Yeah, okay. So, so The bones were buried. They yes. just weren't buried that deep. Mm -mm. Wow. And so when he, not only did he rip it off, but he gave license. Mm. He yes. fanned the flame. Yes, he, did. he almost encouraged it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he did it in the name of, of um, being courageous. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best example of really cowardice mm -hmm. that you don't have the courage to accept people uh, for who they are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to treat everyone with dignity and respect mm -hmm. to say to folks that we're different, but we're still all the same in God's creation. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. And and so now we have a big mess to clean up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Big mess. We gotta weed out the Republicans. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, because there's some good Republicans. Yeah. There's some good Republicans. I, no, I'm just saying we you gotta know, weed I them know out. Yeah. Like two or three of them. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's but I mean, you know, it's almost as if some people don't see those who are another race or gender or anything as human beings. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's been so easy to just shoot someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, because I don't see you as human mm -hmm. and I'll just unload my clip on you. In yeah. a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and, and that's a good segue to the whole George Floyd. I'm like, after the, well, while the uh, verdict verdict was going on, I'm like, man, we're going to have Karen on next week. So this will be a good subject. Oh so. my goodness. <laughs> you know, so, I, I have been, I have been lobbying because here's what I really believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, folks said, well, we got justice. We didn't get justice. We got the right verdict. There's no mm -hmm. question, but you know, there is no justice if you really think about it mm -hmm. for George Floyd's family, right. because they will never see him. They will never get a chance to talk to him or to uh, interact with him. But what we did see is that um, there was one example of accountability, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you have an incident in Columbus, yes. Ohio. Right. You have an in incident in 
Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, uh, first Brooklyn Center, then Columbus, then you go to Spotsylvania, mm -hmm. Virginia, right. then right. you go to uh, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, what is really going on? Right. What is really going on? Right. And that's just last week. Right. Yeah. In the period of like four days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, here, here's what I, I know. There has to be a set of national standards. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the fact that you have almost 20,000 police agencies, mm -hmm. especially if you look at, you know, the transit authorities that have police departments and park departments that have police departments and housing authority. So you have almost 20,000 different police agencies. There have to be some guardrails mm -hmm. put in place. Mm -hmm. There have to be some standards. So you have to determine uh, when will there be strict liability? Mm -hmm. You know, when will you hold an officer strictly liable? Uh, will there be an instance of individual liability? Because if you think that you're not going to have immunity under certain circumstances, you will think about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know, is this a taser or, th or is this a gun? Right. Uh, right. You think about that. <laughs> you know, you'll pay close attention. Right. Right. And and then, you know, what are the instances where people will be held criminally liable. Mm -hmm. And how do you um, create certain standards for police departments to go by and to develop their standards by? Because if you don't have a national standard, and, and I'm just really hoping and praying that President Biden and Vice President Harris will seat a national commission. Mm -hmm. And if they do, I am going to beg to be on it. I yeah, because I was going to see. I will be, you know, unabashed in that. Right. I was, I was going to ask if you could do both <laughs> Urban League and. <laughs> be on the well, because yeah, it would be a volunteer effort, okay. right? Okay. And I would love to do that type of work because um, we sorely need it. Yeah. And you know, I have spent as a prosecutor, as a judge. I've spent a lot of time with law enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, with police mm -hmm. officers, mm -hmm. and I know that the overwhelming majority of them, of them are good men and women mm -hmm. who really do want to police people and serve and protect the community in a constitutional manner. Mm -hmm. But the what we have seen in the national spotlight mm -hmm. creates such a large question mark for so many people that we have to we have to restore police community trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once upon a time kids used to want to be an officer when they grew yeah, up. Yeah. yeah, I remember officer friendly. How about that? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh but you know, I, if you went to any classroom in America, I wonder how many kids would say that now. Yeah. And that's a sad commentary because we need them to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, so, oh, wow. With, with everything that's going on in, in our country, um, how do we as black as African-American or whatever you want to call it, how do we stay focused? Like, you know, how do we get engaged and how do we not, let our emotions get to us so that we go out and riot and, and not do it the way Martin Luther King did and have peaceful marches and protests. How do we stay focused in all this? So I, I think our faith is important, mm -hmm. our faith and our faith leaders. Mm -hmm. So it is important that um, our faith leaders understand that the church has got to be outside of the four walls of the building. Um, and so they have to uh, inspire not just my mother's generation and my generation, our generation, and, and, and they have to inspire subsequent generations to understand that faith has a role in activism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're not going to find a larger res revolutionary than Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so these 
activists have to understand that and have to understand how to uh, focus that frustration and that anger because we feel it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we understand why they're frustrated. Mm -hmm. We're frustrated, but we channel that in a different way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's important. Now, sometimes you need folks protesting in the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, because there are different levels to this, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but you also have to understand that um, in order to gain people's attention, you have to communicate in a way that they understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, did you have any questions? Ray? You sure? Oh. <laughs> no, this is good conversation. Yeah, we we got my 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 sister says uh, join local community boards uh, boards and work for a change and vote in local elections. That's huge. Absolutely, that That's is huge. extremely important. Become yeah, activists um, in your own communities. Yeah, did you see um, where um, Lord? I didn't. Forget, I forgot her name. Um, no, here in Georgia, she ran for governor. Um, oh, Stacey, Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams. Yeah, yes. well, she, did yes. you see that little episode that went on with with her? I'm like, oh my god, yeah they they were coming for it. Uh, oh, last week. Yeah, last week. Uh -huh. Yeah, I but saw she that. She held her own. Yeah. That, yeah, but she can hold her own on yes. any yes. given day, yeah. and I am just hoping. I came down the October before her election to to do some door knocking and, and campaigning because I mean, you know, that was such a huge, huge deal then. And I am just hoping that she runs again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, a, as much as they are trying to make it hard for people to vote mm -hmm. um, in Georgia, I hope that just gives you guys that much more resolve right. to come out in numbers and to do it in accordance with their rules, right. but to show them that Raphael Warnock and right. the other senator that was elected was not a fluke. Mm -hmm. awesome. In yes. fact, mm -hmm. we're going to elect a governor. Right. In fact, you probably did already, and it was just stolen, stolen. four years yeah. ago. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So so how how do we like bring that dignity back, though, to, to the polit political arena? I mean, is it just... Just by voting and vote, voting in. I mean, and, you know, I'm, you know, I vote for the best candidate, I guess, not if it's Republican or Democrat, but, you know, who's who serves the values that I that I cherish, you know, right. who represents so, you. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> to a certain degree. Right. So how do we get, you know, how do we manage that? You know, I think that, um, and my daughter um, and another young woman have developed this app called Politicking, the app, and it promotes civic engagement mm -hmm. among young folks because you do have to vote, mm -hmm. but you have to do it not with knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just say, well, I like that person's name or right. mm -hmm. I knew that person in high school. You have to vote based on the issues, right? And so to the extent that we can get people to understand the issues, make it easy for them to understand the issues. That's why the app is beautiful because, you know, you can have that information. But also we have to get folks who have integrity and who are not in it for themselves, but are in it to serve. We have to encourage them to run. Um, and folks who would never consider themselves candidates for school board, for city council, for other elected offices, for mayor, have to run and be willing to serve because that's the only way that we can ensure a, a level of integrity in government that allows people to have a confidence in government, mm -hmm. you know, because people will say to you in a heartbeat, all politicians are corrupt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All politicians steal. All po politicians lie. There are some who do. Let's be clear. Mm -hmm. But it's not all who do anything. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that we have to re remember. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you, uh, that, that app, 
Um, it's called politicking. Correct. It's uh, P O L I T I C K I N G. The okay. app. Okay. okay. And okay. it's actually a platform where they do a variety of yep. things. In fact, they were down. Um, they had a forum down in Atlanta the weekend before the November election where they just talked about the issues. They just did a Boston mayoral forum because, you know, you have uh, you have a black female mayor in Boston now, but you also have um, uh, candidates where it is more likely than not that the next uh, mayor of Boston will be a woman of color, whether it's the incumbent or uh, the front runners. Uh, there's a, a a Chinese woman mm -hmm. who is council president and a candidate. And then you have another black woman who's a candidate and um, a couple of other women. So, you know, either way you go, that's going to make history mm -hmm. in the, uh, in the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. So after you left uh, uh, being mayor of Gary, you went over to the Chicago urban league. So can yes. you can you uh, tell us what you're doing over there and how you're improving the um, uh, what is it the the atmosphere I guess to, for lack of a word over in Chicago the Chicago land area Chicago land sure area. so we have um, the Chicago Urban League has for over 100 years fought for social justice and racial equity for the black citizens in Chicago. And while we work collaboratively with all groups, our mission is very focused on black families in the city of Chicago. And we do that through research and policy work. Mm -hmm. We do that through our convening power. And then we have programming and housing and entrepreneurship in youth services, in uh, workforce development mm -hmm. and in leadership development mm -hmm. and uh, in ho housing and financial empowerment. And for instance, today, we just uh, closed our applications for a program that we refer to as the Next One program. Mm -hmm. And it is a business accelerator that provides um, MBA level training wow. along with access to capital, along with procurement training for um, black business owners mm -hmm. that have uh, at least $250,000 in revenue, that have at least two employees and who want to take their business to the next level. Mm -hmm. And it's a program that is sponsored by a number of local corporations. It's a nine month cohort based program that will start this year on Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that type of work. And that's just one example of the programming that the Chicago Urban League does. We work very closely with the Atlanta Urban League oh, on wow. a variety of uh, things. Uh, Ms. Nancy Johnson mm -hmm. down in, um, in Atlanta and with Urban Leagues, uh, there are 90 affiliates throughout the country that we work very closely with as well. Wow. wow, that's good. Now, how can they get in contact with the Urban League in Chicago if they? They can go to our website, shyul dot org c h i u l dot org and then our telephone number is seven seven three two eight five seven three zero zero and um, we are always available um, our hours are nine to five but if you uh, send us an email through the site then we'll get back right back to you so do you are you still in the political arena well you know what as a, as a uh, a an executive of a nonpartisan nonprofit, I am not overtly engaged. Mm -hmm. I can always personally support the candidate of my choice, mm -hmm. and that's what I do. I think once that's in your blood, once you are engaged civically in that way, you will always want to do that. But um, I, you know, so 
with the Urban League, we don't endorse any candidates, mm -hmm. but we are very serious. And in fact, um, before the November election, mm -hmm. published a voter education guide. Wow. and uh, are also considering publishing accountability guides. Because, you know, it's one thing to vote for somebody and then you just forget about them, mm -hmm. right? But I think when you vote for someone, you also have to ensure that they do what they, they said did. they were right. going to do. Right. And so that's where voter accountability comes in. And so we are engaged in that work as well. That's whoever the candidate is, if they're a Republican, if they're a Democrat, if they're independent, we want them, if they're successful, to do what they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. In our I think you guys have a mayor's race coming up, don't you? Uh, In Atlanta. I think next year. Yeah, I think so. Because I think um, yeah. she's not going to uh, run for re-election. Mayor Bottoms? Yeah, I think she's... Really? I, I now that's news. I, I th I thought that I might be saw breaking that. news. Uh oh. Uh, well, I'm not sure. Uh, I thought I saw that. I'm, I I could be staying correct. So I saw uh, somebody by the last name of Collins is not returning uh, in his role. Whatever thought, that was, I read that today. I thought she. I don't know. Let's see. Um. But yeah, I'll I'll let you all know about that. Um. But yeah, so we only have about four minutes left. And um, I wanted to just open it up to you to speak your heart to, you know, any fa uh, last final words, you know, for our audience. So I, I am um, just excited about the opportunity to continue to serve. I appreciate you all inviting me on the show today. Um, you know, it's humbling when people even care what you have to say, oh, right? Yeah. Um, outside of your house. Well, because it's, sometimes your family listens to you, sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is, I enjoy doing what I do. And, um, you know, in this last year, what I've learned is really what's important, right? Um, I was diagnosed with COVID very early in, uh, in fact, it was March 13th. And my doctor and I were laughing recently because she was saying, we really didn't know what to do. I said, yeah, I could tell. <laughs> right. I there. That's why I came home. Uh -huh. I was like, in fact, the nurse asked me uh, when I was in the emergency room, she was like, you don't want to stay, do you? And I was like, since you asked me the question that way, absolutely not. You mm -hmm. know, I Mm. As bad as I feel, but you know, I it, it was a blessing to be counted among the survivors, right? right? Because during the time that I was sick, and I was pretty sick, mm -hmm. um, I was looking at the body count on CNN, wow. and at that time, it was very early. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, maybe um, I don't know, uh, two hundred mm -hmm. or two thousand. So it was very early. It had not become that critical, especially in the United States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, of course, now we know that it's more than a half a million. And so um, as a result of being quarantined, I had an opportunity to really spend quality time with my family. Mm -hmm. My daughter came home from law school and we had not spent that type of time uh, together because they were attending virtually probably in 10 years. Wow. Uh, we were cooking every day mm -hmm. uh, oh, as yeah. a family. And, you know, my husband is uh, a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, you know, the question was, what could we cook mm -hmm. that he could eat and that we could <laughs> enjoy? Because she was a pescatarian at the okay. time. And, you know, I, I just eat. So I'm an eatitarian. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> and, uh, and, but, you know, the funny thing was that because she was doing most of the cooking, I became, uh, you know, I ate what she ate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even though I cooked probably more in the last year than I had in the last wow. 15 years. Oh, wow. Uh, and, uh, and so you still want to make things better mm -hmm. on the outside, but I think that we all had an opportunity to understand how important 
family is. It wasn't that we didn't understand it before, mm -hmm. but we may not have, you know, helped them to really know how much we appreciated them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I, um, that's what I've come to appreciate. Uh, even with um, my, you know, personal experience, but also with um, the losses that we had because we lost uh, one of my mom's sisters mm. during the pandemic. Gotcha. And, um, you know, to have to go through that and, and the distancing that uh, occurs, you know, you don't mourn the same way now. Mm -hmm. And I think what it all does is let you ultimately understand how important your faith is. Right. Exactly. Hmm. Yep. Wow. And I do stand corrected. Mayor Bottoms is running for re-election. Yes. She is. Okay. Running. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> so, but I was like, wow, this is breaking news. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> oh, I had Chris some <laughs> Right. I had some inside scoop. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but I want to be mindful of the time. It's eight o'clock. It's top of the hour. And uh, we just want to say thank you so much thank for you. Um, thank you all. joining our little small par podcast for now. <laughs> You know, so this is but, major. We, yeah. you know, appreciate what you all are doing. You Thank are you. doing a great job at it, and and keep doing what you're doing because it, you. it's blessing folks. It's making a difference, and uh, and thanks for allowing me to be a part of it. All right. Thank you. I De will tell you this: we did have Denise Williams on in February for Black History Month. Is that right? Yes, we did. One of my favorites. Oh yes. yes. Still, it was good. Still, still, still. Because you know she's my you know cousin. one of. The, yeah, and she still comes home. Yes, yeah, she does. You yeah. know, at the drop of a hat, you can call her and she's here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, thank yep. you so much. Do you, do you do you have cash out? I do. Okay. Uh, I'll just talk to Deborah then to get your cash out because we want to sow a seed. Oh, so. now. <laughs> we, okay. So I, I'll it's get not it. necessary, yeah, no. but you always appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll contact her after so, this show and get it from her then. And bless you guys all right bless thank you, you guys so and, much and uh take care next time you come home look me up okay i will i will i, I know you both have a lot of relatives to see <laughs> yeah. especially on that blakely side right right right, right. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> yep 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 all right well you take it easy and thank you thanks again thank you all right. thank you you take guys care. take care all right you too all right bye-bye bye-bye bye. 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 All right, let's see here. Wow. That was amazing. Are we we not Again. knocked out? We not no, knocked out. no, I'm not going to uh, stop the broadcast or stop the rendezvous session yet. That okay. was amazing. Yeah, that was. Thank um, you, Karen Freeman Wilson. That was good. I honestly, I was just in awe. I, was, I kept looking. I was like, I don't want to crack a joke, say something. I just want to just look. This was this was major tonight. Was another one and another one. Mm -hmm. And another one bites the dust. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Not that song. No. Why did you do that? I got you some girl. Why did you do that? I got my baby something. Okay. What are you? What? Oh, my baby. Some Hershey Mars. No, not this one. No, Symphony is me. No, but I can't. No, that. no, Symphony is that has like the my, almond it's and my toffee favorite. chips. Because it's hard to find. Dollar store. Got a bunch of them. Okay, well, then give me that. Hershey's with almonds because Split you know. half and half. Okay. Mm. <laughs> mm, praise the Lord. Thank you, dear. So. Man. That was a great interview. We had Karen Freeman Wilson on our show. The Honorable. The Honorable. The President. President, the former mayor, the former attorney general, the but, woman who scared me half to life mm -hmm. with about driving fast, about driving too fast and running stop signs in Gary. I was on the east side. Can she come here? I got like three tickets at one time. What was the problem? Were you trying to get to the bathroom? No, I was just a fast driver. Well, slow that. Did it slow you down? Did it help your whole life? Did it mm -mm, change? Because you still say I drive too fast. Oh, you do. California made you worse. No. Oh, yes, it did. California was fun to drive in. 
They don't know how to drive in California. No, that's Atlanta. No, nope, that's California. Atlanta. Well, Atlanta too, but I think California is worse. Atlanta's worse. I don't think so. I do. Everything. There's worse. accidents all over the place that's in Atlanta. That's the same. I mean, and the same thing in California. No, 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 that's too. why the traffic be jacked up all the time. I disagree. Okay, well, you can disagree. I don't, I don't care anyway. I don't, I don't I'm going to try to do some research. How many accidents a month does Atlanta have compared to? You know, if you got time like that, uh huh. Well, then you can do something on my to-do list. <sighs> What's your to-do list? I don't know. Anyway, so, guys, listen. Thank you all so wait, much. Wait, I'm not ready to stop the show. Mother's Day is coming up. Yes, it is. And I already told you I, want, I, I don't want to see no stuffed animals. That That is not my thing, okay? Stuffed animals me. is not my thing. Um, flowers are cool. Candy is okay. I like Marshalls. I don't like Marshalls. But I do, and it's my day. I have three children. I have earned that title of mother. I was thinking we should go to, like, Puerto Rico. For but Mother's I, Day. Oh, not for Mother's Day. Well, you for our, it's our anniversary. No, it's not. Mm. That's next. Well, month. that's the following. Wait, May. May nineteenth. May nineteenth is our anniversary of twenty years. Right, and Mother's Day is when? May ninth. May 9th. That's a week apart. Ten I mean, days two, apart. We could celebrate everything together. No. Why not? Nope. I could take you to Puerto Rico. No. And I can say, Hey, cómo I estás, mi amigo? Mm-hmm. And I am a wife. I need double honor in one month. Look, y'all. If you Listen. can put it on the chat, if I can do Puerto Rico trip to suffice for Mother's Day. No, and no, because Mother's Day need to be separate. It's celebrated with my children. Okay, I have three. Can you all, can the ladies who are still watching give me some ideas for Mother's Day and then some ideas for our When did our you twin- start need, needing ideas? I just want some extra ideas to put in. To, to you don't help need my- an idea. I told you what I wanted. I know that. but Hold on. And then the phone call we got today, we ain't going nowhere for Mother's Day. Oh, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going somewhere for our anniversary. That's fine. Puerto Rico. <sighs> you always wanted me to take you to an island. Mm. You took me to How come you can't take me to Chris, Chris. You took that land and you took your... Chris. How come you can't take me? See, you do not air it out dirty laundry. That ain't dirty. <laughs> You've been to Puerto Rico before. How come you can't you take are, me? You took me. Huh? You took me to Puerto Vallarta where you went. No, we didn't go to Puerto Vallarta. Yes, we did. Oh, we did. When did we go to Puerto Vallarta? Oh, we did go to yes, Puerto Vallarta. Yes, we did. But we didn't go to Puerto Rico. Oh, I know that, but I was referring to when I said No, no, that you said what well, you was knew. Ta- okay, well... Anyway, she wants to do go to Puerto Rico because you want to go to Puerto Rico. Mm, yes, you know where I want to go. I want to well, go to Greece. Okay, I want to go to well, Bora Bora. COVID. I'm, okay, it's too, it's too bad over there. How do you know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to. Fly. I'm not, no, I'm not trying to go there now. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. I want to go to Greece. I'm going to go to the Vatican, and I'm not Catholic. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder if we should get our friend Terrell on the phone. Terrell is busy. Yeah. What is is there something wrong with ending? You well, know, you, you know what? Stay in an early night. You know what? Look here. Okay. Let see, me tell you something. Y'all remember how I left last week? Yes. <laughs> and when you leave, <laughs> that's when the show. <laughs> goes to a different level well, you know to what? another you level me, did you give me chocolate for now or later like i gave you chocolate for whenever you needed some chocolate he's not gonna answer the phone i'm trying to tell you oh my goodness well that's my buddy it will let on the phone 
Hold on, y'all. Hold Another on. week. Let's see if he answers the phone. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So our our uh, anniversary is coming up, mm-hmm. and then our next week's guest is yours truly, mm-hmm. Christian Carlette. Um. Yeah. And then we have some. What is other. that like? May third. I don't know. I don't know. But you know. Uh, Your call. Is- so yeah, he's not answering his phone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, um, we want to thank you. So if you all uh, that are still viewing us um, can support us by uh, sending a donation to C, uh, via Cash App to C and C Live. That's dollar sign C and C Live to Cash App. Or if you have Carlet's number, you can use Zelle to send just a small, let's, let's say $25, you know. You had twenty five dollars, or if you love this show and you love us, just you know, send over five dollars. What have you? We do have. We do try to pay our guests, and we have other expenses like this electric bill that has all these lights and cameras and stuff. So, any final departing words? Please like and share on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Chris and Carlet Live page and also Chris and Carlet Live on YouTube. Please subscribe and please share on our on your um with our your, all your friends and family. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all. All right, guys, gals, we thank you so much for joining us, joining Chris and Carlet Live. We appreciate you all. All right. All right. Bye. Peace out. Thanks for joining us this week on Chris and Carlette Live. Make sure to visit our website, chrisandcarlette.com. If you're on Facebook, share this broadcast. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to our show. You may also find us on Apple Podcast, where you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. Let us stay in contact with you by texting CNC Live to 474747. That's CNC Live to 474747. CNC Live.